Let's get into it. What a week. A leading Tim Scott donor will host a high-end fundraiser in New York for Nikki Haley, according to an invitation sent out less than 24 hours after Scott dropped out of the race. Yikes. This is like when somebody dumps you and then you see them back on Tinder the next day. But even worse, because in that analogy, at least you're someone who had sex in your lifetime. What a, I mean, we don't get to make these jokes anymore because he's gone. And so I guess that'll be the last one for a bit. West Virginia, until he endorses Trump, West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin said Wednesday that he would consider a presidential run saying this. I will do anything I can to help my country. Is that a yes? And you're saying, does that mean you would consider it? Absolutely. Every American should consider if they're in a position to help save the country. You guys know Joe Manchin. Always willing to do anything he can to improve people's circumstances. Anything short of changing an obscure Senate rule to allow Democrats to pass legislation that would do just that. Anything at all. <laughs> this fucking guy. But remember, Joe Manchin, catch more bees with honey with that guy. Is it bees you catch with honey or flies? Both. The bees make the honey. We get the honey from the bees to tempt the flies. And they both don't like vinegar. <laughs> Meanwhile, Donald Trump has filed a motion for a mistrial in his New York fraud case, alleging that Judge Arthur Engoron is biased. This is a last resort. <laughs> For Trump, after his initial legal strategy of insulting the judge to his face a bunch of times, failed to find traction. I do see Trump's point, though. Every single witness that he has brought to the stand was someone Trump hates, like Don Jr. <laughs> Given that anger on himself will rule on the mistrial, the motion is unlikely to succeed. Being forced to do a performance review of yourself at the most exhausting time of the year, judges, they're just like us. Is it not performance review season where you are? Or is that a crooked thing? Everybody doing their performance reviews? Clap if you're doing a performance review. Clap if you have to do a self-review. Where do you have to improve? Where do I have to improve? For whatever reason, I, no one seems to want to hear my review of myself. <laughs> I do that here every week. Where do I need to improve, Brian? They wouldn't let you review me. <laughs> they wouldn't let me? Did you ask? Yeah, you're not in the system. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have done it. I'd have done it. Thank you. Trump retruths a truth social, yuck, uh, from a supporter that read, I would like to see Tish James and Judge Engeron placed under citizen's arrest for blatant election interference and harassment. This is what Trump was up to the day after his older sister, Marianne, died, bravely posting through the grief, threatening judges <laughs> through the tears. It's one of the stages, actually. I, I don't know where it, I think it goes, denial, bargaining, threatening. <laughs> Actually, I think anger. I mean, I think it actually is one of, he's in, that's, he's genuinely in a stage of grief. You know, he is a person in some sense, I guess. <laughs> Secretary of the Treasury Janet Yellen was photographed ordering in and out before going to the airport to meet China's president on Tuesday. Imagine getting to look Janet Yellen dead in the eye and say, would you like that animal style, Madam Secretary? <laughs> animal style? Is there any other way, she replies, running a finger down the lapel of her sensible suit jacket. You know, she's a freak. <laughs> She'd raise your rates. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> president Biden subsequently met with China's President Xi for the first time in a year on Wednesday, with Xi assuring him that the planet is big enough for both superpowers. Continued Xi, we just have to do a little downsizing. Give planet Earth the Marie Kondo treatment. Let's go alphabetically. Does Afghanistan spark joy? Biden also wished Xi's wife a happy early birthday, causing the Chinese president to admit that he had forgotten his wife's birthday, which was coming up on November 20th, which led him to say that he was embarrassed. Biden has the kind of wife guy energy that transcends borders and even wives. American, Chinese, his wife, your wife. He's going to remember her birthday. <laughs> We've all been wondering how World War III would start, and I'm excited to announce that it's simply Chinese President Xi felt birthday cucked. Meanwhile, thousands of TikTok users have been posting videos where they gush approvingly of Osama bin Laden's A Letter to America and encouraging others to read it. The Guardian ultimately removed the virulently anti-Semitic, homophobic, and violent text. Based on my experience, the only way to make something go even more viral on TikTok is to turn it into a mystery or give it a gigantic, perfect ass. So great job, Guardian. You picked the worst one. <laughs> now, instead of freaking out about the fact that people are sharing this 
disgusting document. I'm going to chalk it up to another case of no one actually read the article. They just skimmed it. They saw that America should assign the Kyoto Climate Change Agreement and missed the stuff like Ben Franklin was right about the Jews and America invented AIDS. Those are real. Jesus. Kids. Kids. You can't be this cheap a date. When the answer is stop being gay and kill the Jews, you don't need to do so much work to parse the question. You know what I'm saying? In a statement released Thursday, the White House condemned TikTokers promoting the letter, saying that no one should ever insult the 2,977 American families still mourning loved ones by associating themselves with the vile words of Osama bin Laden. I'm glad the U.S. is finally taking a stance on Osama bin Laden. The silence was deafening. Meanwhile... <laughs> To wake up today, to see stories about kids discovering the B-sides of Bin Laden <laughs> was too much for my, I was like, I, can't, I simply cannot. And then, then you have to go online and see people explaining why they shouldn't do that. And it's like, oh no, we shouldn't have to explain that. That should be something people came to naturally, which is why I've decided to support homeschooling. <laughs> Because if I had to choose between kids that knew how old the earth was <laughs> but meanwhile, more than a dozen <laughs> This episode of Love or Leave It brought to you by homeschooling. Meanwhile, more than a dozen celebrities led by Sasha Baron Cohen confronted TikTok executives to demand they do more to combat rising anti-Semitism on the platform as Israel's invasion of Gaza and war with Hamas continues. You don't want to fuck with us on this, warned the celebrities. We've printed out the sheet music to imagine. We've divvied up the parts. TikTok's head of operations said the platform can do more to stop harassment of Jewish creators like responding quicker to harassment reports, but that there is no magic button to address all of their concerns. Continued the executive, I mean a magic button that controls everything? Only the Jews have that. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Congress, Republicans are still unable to use their words after challenging Teamster President Sean O'Brien to a fight on the floor of the Senate. Senator Mark Wayne Mullen defended the move in the press, telling Newsmax, every now and then, you need to get punched in the face. Now you're speaking my language, Mark Wayne. <laughs> sexually but the whole point <laughs> but the whole point of teamsters is you're never fighting just one one of the funny things about la is there's the writers union and the actors union and the directors union and they have power through collective bargaining and action but these are still unions made up of former speech and debate champs and elliptical users who make student films inspired by the umbrellas of chambord you know what i mean like these are soft soft sweet adults and they have power through their collective action but you're not afraid of them you know, not even a not even a bunch of them. They could stop a car briefly, but even then, they're going to get out of the way if you honk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but underneath the whole strike, it was this idea that like, listen, we know the writers, we know the actors are striking, but nobody fuck with the Teamsters. Studios don't fuck with the Teamsters. The writers don't fuck with the Teamsters. Don't fuck with the Teamsters. I think that's a good rule. I don't really remember the Irishman, but I think that's one of the lessons of that film, <laughs> as well. Uh, a friend of mine was telling me a story about uh, about the bright writer strike that happened in 2007, and they took a break from I don't know walking in front of Paramount or something, and they went to a bar and they ordered mai tais and they had uh, you know these big drinks with these with the with the umbrellas on the side, and some old teamster was at the bar just happy to be getting a drink, and uh, he said, "Oh, who are you?" And they said who they were, and the teamster said, "When in my day when we went on strike, there were no mai tais." <laughs> I like that. Uh, Mark Wayne Mullen later told Fox News. Some people say, is this behavior incumbent to a Senate, uh, to a senator? I, I don't know, but I will tell you this for sure. Um, that's not how we behave in Oklahoma, and I'm Oklahoman first. And so if you're going to run your mouth, you're going to be called out on it. And that's what happened here. I mean, no offense, but I really wasn't worried about the fight itself. Uh, but I was ready to shut his mouth up. <laughs> a couple points I'd like to make about this. I feel like the one thing that unites like Oklahoma, like New York is you could say that exact same sentence, but you could say New York in it. You know, like, I don't know what they do in D.C., but in New York, we don't tolerate that kind of shit. And then I got, got the thing is like, well, where are the places where they say like, oh, we don't fight here. People fight everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah, not like those fags in Seattle.
Maybe not in Seattle. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to stand up here and call myself an Oklahoma expert, but I have seen the musical, and from what I remember, it's a lot more singing and bell kicks. I don't think they really thought they were going to fight. I think that's a classic hold me back situation. Like, oh, oh my, you know, like there's so much space. He stands up. The thing he does, which I appreciate, and by the way, to be clear, Mark Wayne Mullen, if you're hearing this, I don't want to fight you. You would win. I surrender. Uh, <laughs> but he stands up, he stands up, and he, and like he stands up, and if you look, watch what he does with his hands, but he goes for his ring, and then he lets go. He like, as if he's going to take his ring off, either already realizing that this is not going to go there or it's all pantomime. I don't know if he's in the moment realizing he's not actually going to fight or he never was planning to, but if the ring had come off and said like, these guys are going to, this could happen. And I, I'd be cool with it happening. <laughs> Meanwhile, that's not the only physical altercation in Congress this week. Kevin McCarthy's shoving survivor, Tim Burchett, and a Newsmag host suggested on Wednesday, Tim Burchett, you know, he got an elbow to the kidneys and he's milking it for all he's worth. That guy's been on a press tour. He said that GOP Congressman Nancy Mace would be forced to spill some dirt on McCarthy if he messed with their campaigns. He also has $17 million um, in an account um, that he'll be messing in a lot of people like mine and Nancy Mason's campaigns, I'm sure. And so um, I don't know if know, he does that with Nancy May. She could come back at him with some stuff that he doesn't want out there in yeah. the public, I think, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, she she's already told me. She said, I hope he does that with me and um, and she'll take care of him. She takes care of her own. What are you talking about? Sex stuff? Ew. I don't want to know. Keep your secrets. Let them have their secrets. I don't want to know. It's chilling to think about. What secret could McCarthy possibly have that's more embarrassing than everything that's happened to him on live TV? Later on Tuesday, McCarthy denied having intentionally hit Burchett, saying, if I hit somebody, they would know it. If I kidney punch someone, they would be on the ground. Okay, OJ. Republican Congressman Ken Buck had this take on McCarthy's denial. Kevin McCarthy and lying are, are like peanut butter and jelly. Too spicy. But... <laughs> <laughs> But fight night on Capitol Hill still wasn't over. A heated argument broke out during a House oversight hearing. Republican Congressman James Comer has in the past tried to make hay about a loan Joe Biden gave his brother when Joe Biden was out of office. We've already called for the president uh, to release the terms of the so-called loan that he apparently claims he made to his brother. But look, whether or not he made a loan is irrelevant. Then the Daily Beast reported that James Comer, who you just saw speaking, had some shady dealings of his own with his brother over some land. That led Congressman Jared Moskowitz to point this out during the hearing. It has come out in the public that you also do business with your brother with potential loans. And so since you have framed that and manipulated that with the American people, that Joe Biden did something wrong when he wasn't in office, I just would like to know if you would like to use some of my time. I would love, I would love it. At which point Comer called Jared Moskowitz. You look like a Smurf here, just going around and all this stuff. You look like a Smurf. Because uh, for those listening, he's wearing a blue suit with a blue tie. <laughs> he didn't really land it. He didn't land it. I think that he could have like, like that, like, like if you, if he, if he, he says you look like a Smurf and he kind of, the way he did the ding, let's just go through it. Because he says, he says, he like kind of attacks the allegation and then he says, you look like a Smurf, but the way he says you look like a Smurf implies that it's connected to the way he's leveling the allegation. And because it's not, neither hit lands, neither hit lands. What if he should have said is that if he had said something like that daily, that daily beast report is bullshit and you know it and you look like a fucking Smurf, that would have landed. <laughs> that would have landed if he, if he just made it a separate unrelated hit. Because it's not like Smurfs are famous for doing investigations or they're like famously deceptive. They're just blue. And that was just a comment about his blue clothes. So it just needed to be a, a he, he tried to tie the blue slam to the lie slam or the claim that the allegation about his brother is a lie slam, but he couldn't do it. He needed to keep it separate. That's a little note for James Comer, Republican. <laughs> and then later Moskowitz tweeted a Gargamel burn. He just called him. He said, uh, he said something about Gargamel. It was the dumbest L'Esprit de l'Escalier. I did it. It was the dumbest L'Esprit, it was the dumbest L'Esprit de l'Es, it was the dumbest L'Esprit de l'Escalier in history. I did it. 
I don't have jokes about Moskowitz and Comer. I just want to keep you up to date on the uh, goings on in Congress. House Speaker Mike Johnson pushed through a stopgap spending bill to avoid a government shutdown over the objections of many House Republicans. But don't worry, if you miss this government shutdown, you can just catch the next one or the one after that. The bill that passed is almost identical to one Johnson opposed just six weeks ago when he was still an unknown hardliner. It's tough to be the guy in charge, isn't it, Mike? You can't just kick your feet up and yell biblical slurs at the guy in the big chair because you're the guy in the big chair. Easy to make fun of Noah for the wood he chose for the keel and garbage strake. Not so easy to build a boat, is it, babe? It's been... <laughs> It's been, it's been a busy week for Johnson as he also stopped by CNBC's Squawk Box. <laughs> the dumbest name fucking show in the world. Squawk Box. What's a Squawk Box? Anyway, he went there. He went to CNBC, of course, to talk about why there shouldn't be a separation between church and state. The separation of church and state is a, is a misnomer. People misunderstand it. Of course, it comes from a phrase that was in a letter that Jefferson wrote. It's not in the Constitution. Anyway, everyone, please open your math textbooks to Leviticus. Said Johnson, what he was explaining is they did not want the government to encroach upon the church, not that they didn't want the principles of faith to encroach on our public life. It's exactly the opposite. It's like how I can make my wife turn on location sharing on her phone, but she can't make me. This is simple, intuitive stuff. We also learned this week via Politico that Mike Johnson is a board member for Living Waters Publication, a Christian ministry and publisher which made videos that somehow are exactly as you'd expect, but also shocking, like how monkeypox is an inevitable and appropriate penalty for being gay. Speaking of an appropriate penalty for being gay, George Santos was spotted feeding a baby. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> On the floor of the Congress. Only this time we know who that baby is. Why, it's Lauren Boebert's grandson. For now. And then on Thursday, the House Ethics Committee released an ethics report on George Santos, revealing substantial evidence that the Republican congressman misused campaign funds. All right, think, George, muttered Santos. You sweet talk your way out of that sultan's high security dungeon, and you'll sweet talk your way out of this one. <laughs> According to the report, Santos used campaign funds for purchases at Sephora and Hermes. George, I just have one message for you from the whole Love It or Leave It team. The report also says that Santos used campaign funds to pay for Botox. When confronted with this accusation, Santos was stoic. And if that wasn't... <laughs> Only if you get too much. If that wasn't wonderful, <laughs> if you get just the right amount, your crow's feet go away. And if that wasn't wonderful enough, Santos additionally used campaign funds for purchases on OnlyFans. This is why, if you use Covenant Eyes, your accountability partner cannot be Matt Gates. Oh, and the report also says that Santos knowingly filed false financial statements to Congress and the Federal Election Committee, and the Ethics Committee has a sentencing recommendation. Six years on a trashy reality TV show. Oh, oh no. In the wake of the report, Santos said Thursday that he would not seek re-election because, in a sense, he has already won. Our hearts. Santos did throw his full support behind the campaign of his twin sister, Georgina Von Foxy, saying, you're going to love her. She wears a lot of Sephora. <laughs> Santos said he wouldn't seek re-election because his family deserves better than to be under the gun from the press all the time. Santos attached a photo of his gorgeous family, three bundled up Hermes scarves with pacifiers slathered in Charlotte Tilbury. Here on the West Coast, a massive fire severely damaged a section of the 10 freeway in downtown Los Angeles. Officials originally said it might take months to repair. After the 1994 Northridge earthquake, a section of the 10 was rebuilt in three months, but that was before everyone had TikTok on their phones. Of course, as we all know, when a fire damaged a section of highway in Philly, Governor John Shapiro got a temporary fix up in two weeks. This was not lost on California governor and guy who shows you how to serve a volleyball, even though you didn't ask, Gavin Newsom. <laughs> He said on Tuesday that fixing the highway would take only three to five weeks, and he'd like to push for it to be completed even sooner. Hell yeah. Come on, Gavin. You get showed up by some Pennsylvanian? <laughs> Newsom described the fire as being set with malice intent, saying it appeared to be arson. Continued Newsom, our next task is to determine who in Los Angeles has a personal grudge against the freeway. So far, we have narrowed it down to everyone. <laughs> 
According to the New York Times, federal officials are investigating whether New York City Mayor Eric Adams pressured the fire department to approve occupancy of a new high-rise in Manhattan that houses the Turkish consulate despite concerns over the building's fire safety system. The claim is part of a public corruption investigation by the FBI, who seized Adams' electronic devices last week. Said one investigator, while the corruption inquiry is ongoing, we can now confirm that this guy has the weirdest camera roll you have ever fucking seen. Look at it. Do you think that's the same year of corn? or like a dozen different ones. And he's clearly on a roller coaster, right? How many times can one adult man go to the medieval times in Lindhurst and he always seems to go alone? Is it every Saturday? I thought he was a vegan. The man has a picture of every rat in New York City in a folder titled Personal Enemies. <laughs> he's a weird dude. Gwyneth Goes Skiing, a musical about Gwyneth Paltrow's legal battle with a 76-year-old retired optometrist who claimed the actress slammed into him on a ski slope and ultimately lost in court, will open in London next month. Unrelated, I'll be taking some time off to go to London next month for a funeral. That's right, a funeral. In case you're wondering how quickly the Gwyneth Paltrow musical came together, Paltrow's trial was in March of this year. This thing moved faster than a lying optometrist on skis. After public backlash, Warner Brothers announced the studio will be reversing its decision to shelve Coyote vs. Acme, allowing the filmmakers to try to find a distributor. The studio had decided to scrap the movie for a $30 million tax write-off. The studio realized it had gone too far only after slowly coming to a standstill, searching around with just a foot only to feel nothing, only howling sky, looking down and then holding up a sign that said, Help. And finally, a plane en route to Belgium was forced to turn back to JFK Airport after a horse got loose in the cargo hold. But the real drama started when he decided to recline his seat. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, said the pilot over the intercom. Is there a cowboy on board? When asked why the horse was on the plane to begin with, a Spirit Airlines spokesperson responded, If you know a better way to get the plane to smell like that, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> The horse escaped from its stall at around 31,000 feet, said one of the pilots to air traffic control in Boston. We don't have a problem flying-wise, but we cannot get the horse back secured. The pilot went on, so yes, everything is fine. Please have fresh oats at the ready when we land. And carrots. This is still the human pilot, by the way. Nay day, nay day. <laughs> anyway... Things were relatively under control until that same horse started loudly singing Grammy-nominated gospel songs. So they'll allow a horse, but I can't bring my emotional support, Iguana, said producer Kendra. Fortunately, the horse and the human passengers safely landed in JFK, though the horse was later canceled after praising Osama bin Laden on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs>